Now the X5 can give you pretty much everything you can ask for from a car. It's got looks, it's got good performance, it's comfortable. And if you spec it with this engine, the three litre diesel, it can give you good fuel economy too. Now this, in this review, I'm gonna test out all its technologies, take it for a spin and launch the car and find out why this is the best SUV I think you can buy on the market. I'm Max Atavani, welcome to Driven Plus. Firstly, we're going to start under the bonnet of the X5 and sit to the B57 engine, which is a 3-litre diesel engine, straight 6, 335 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque. But look how low down this engine is mounted. Good for handling. Top speed of this thing, 152 miles per hour. 0 to 60, 5.5 seconds. So let's see if you're right, BMW. So we're now going to launch the car from 0 to 60. On your screen now are the stats and figures on this car, so pause your screen if you want to divulge into them. The question is though, does the X540D have a launch control? So let's find out. Let's put the car in, uh, you know, the gearbox in S. Sport plus traction half off. Right, let's firmly depress the brake. Yes, we have launch control. Wow, that's aggressive. <laughs> Right, 5.5 seconds, what are we going to get? 4.78! Wow, that's rapid. For an X5 40D, it delivers you a sub 5 second 0 to 60 time. That's incredible. It really is. Fair play, BMW. This is a sleeper. It really is. Back to the review. Inside of the X5, it feels very plush, and you'd expect it to as well, because it's a premium car. Now, this does have a few optional extras. Let's start with the Pro Pack. Inside, what you get with that are the M colours on the seatbelt there, so that's really nice. You also get the Technology Pack, and with that, you get wireless charging down here, and you also get the uh, Harman Kardon sound system, which is all very nice. You get a 12.3-inch infotainment screen, along with a digital driver's display as well. Now, this is the preface lift, so you don't get the iDrive 8, that big kind of curved screen. But I really like this because you get buttons for climate control, which I much prefer, and I think everyone is in agreement with me there as well. Down here, you get your cup holders with your USB socket there. You get all your, your driver functions here, such as your sport buttons, start, stop, and your controls for the um, infotainment. Having said that, it is touchscreen as well, and it's easily accessible, which is great. One thing which I love about these kind of grander BMWs is a split glove box. It just makes it feel that extra bit more premium. But I have to say, the build quality, like any BMW, is superb. It really is. All this squidgy leather and all that stuff is great. Glove box is a good size as well, and the seats are really comfortable. You really do sink into them, and the steering wheel is nice and chunky as well. You got there, there's no split um, sun visors, which you get on a Range Rover, by the way, talking of Range Rover, this is more of a driver-centric cabin where Range Rover is more open, I will say that. But other than that, what a great place to sit. So, in the back of the X5, it's really easy to get in, thanks to it having a really low seat bench in the back. You sit really comfortable, loads of head space and knee space as well, which is good. Two isofix points there, you get your well, bit of an armrest coming down here with your cup holders and a bit of a central storage unit going on there. If you go skiing for the weekend, not a problem. You can put them through there. Look at that. This X5 is really, really practical, but they are super plush, these seats. And, you know, this kind of cross-stitch leather comes in on the back as well. Two-zone climate control in this, and so you don't have rear heated seats, but you do get a 12-volt socket down there. However, the ambient lighting does carry on onto the back with those door lights there. But it's a really nice place to sit. I could go for hours in this car. Now this is the pre-facelift X5, but it still is a 23 model, so relatively new. On your screen now is the facelift of the new X5. It looks great, I will say that, but one thing I'm not so sure on is the new lights. I much prefer these lights here, I will say that, but I just think the proportions are right. I love the grille, it just gives it that classy and elegant look. One thing which definitely does give this car much more credit, much more stance, is the splitter that Gareth has put on. It looks much more meaty, much more, just more presence, doesn't it? And I must say, the colour looks great, it's called Photonic Blue. Now, one thing I've always loved about X5s is that they offer you a split tailgate like you get on the full-fat Range Rover. 
top part opens electronically. The bottom part you have to manually do yourself via this button here. You have another button here which lowers the suspension. Um, but if you want this to come down automatically, you have to opt for the convenience pack. And I do have a set of golf clubs here, which I'm going to demonstrate the boot space of this X5. It has 650 litres, which is identical to the Range Rover Sport. Now in the boot here, you do have 12 volt socket there and you've a few pegs going on. So it's a, it's a great size as well, I will say that. Now, you can't press this button, it'll all go up. You have to manually do it, which isn't a big problem, is it? Let's be honest. Now I think the overall look of the rear end of this car is great. Now I think the reason we got a really good 0-60 time is the fact that Gareth, the owner of this car, has put an aftermarket exhaust that adds good downforce. That's definitely the reason we got a good 0-60 time, by the way. But whilst we're here and Gareth is in the driver's seat, he's going to start it up for us so we can hear what this car sounds like. By the way, it started. Let's hear it. Mmm, sounds meaty. What about when we put it in sport mode? That's nice and warm, actually. But there you go. That's the sound of the X540D. Let's get out onto the road. So on the road, the X5 holds itself extremely well. It's super smooth and comfortable. You'd expect it to be as well because of the price of these things. And it's a luxury car. The suspension does an incredible job. Talking of the suspension, BMW do give you two choices. One being coil springs and the other being the air suspension. Air suspension will give you a much more of a smoother ride, whereas the coil springs will probably give you more of a reassuring feeling. However, this is a luxury car. Do you care about the feeling this generates you? Probably not. One cool thing about this car, because this has the air suspension, if I put this in sport mode, basically the air suspension will lower, which will then reduce the center of gravity. And the car does have that sporty feel to it. It's agile for a big car. You've got nice steering feel, which is what I like. And the thing I like about the X-Drive system, it's rear bias. So as we come to a corner here, apply a bit of throttle, it feels like you get pushed out a corner. It's a nice feeling. It's a driver-focused SUV. Now this particular X5, is specced with the air suspension and it's super smooth it definitely does deliver you that magic carpet ride like you get in a range rover one thing i will say though is that the range rover is much smoother what i will say though is the x5 definitely does give you more feedback in terms of what the car is doing on the road i will say that talking about a range rover if you're going to compare them side by side one thing this does fall short of is its off-road capabilities. I'm not really going to buy an X5 to go off-roading, and I, and I get that. However, this shouldn't really sweat at the small stuff. It's got four-wheel drive anyway, so it shouldn't really have any problems getting you out on muddy field. You'd like to think so, anyway. Gearbox is a ZF8 torque converter. Love these gearbox. They're great for pretty much every aspect of driving. That bleep there you've just heard is to tell me I'm coming up to a speed camera. So here you go. There's one good thing about the technology on the X5. But going back to the gearbox, these are super smooth, super responsive, and I can play with the gearbox via the paddles on the steering wheel. So what we're going to do is put it in manual mode, put the car in its most sporting setting. All right, let's drop down. We're in S3, let's go M2. Oh, it really does hold. They're quick changes. And the car, you really can feel the torque push you along, thanks to it being a diesel. One thing I like about this engine is how quiet it is. BMW have done an incredible job of the sound deadening. You know, there's hardly any engine noise coming in. I'm going to put my foot down now. I'm going to keep the, my tone of voice the same, just to show you that there's not much engine noise that comes in. So I put my foot flat to the floor. I'm still speaking within the same tone. I mean, you can hear it because it's getting faster. Probably more wind noise than engine noise, but it just shows you the level of engineering that BMW have gone into to keep engine noise to a minimum. Another thing which I really like about this engine is the sheer torque of it. We're just going to go up this hill. I'm going to apply a little bit of throttle and you can just feel that torque push you along. You don't have to put your foot down. 700 newton meters of torque is a lot. It's great for towing. If you're a Range Rover owner, new breakdown, call someone with an X5 and they'll come and help you tow your car home. 
and I have to say one thing BMW always smashes no matter what model car you sit in is its driver ergonomics you know where your left elbow sits and your right arm sits you can just sit them there put your hands on the steering wheel and drive it really is great and even up here you could sit here for hours and get out feeling refreshed what a place to sit but I think it's an all-round great car. Would I have one over a Range Rover? Yes, only because I'm a BMW man, and if you're buying a Range Rover Sport SV, I'd much rather get the X5 because the SV breaks down. That's fact, by the way. <laughs> but um, no, it's a great car. I think if you're planning to buy one, I think you would have bought yourself probably one of the best SUVs on the market in terms of capability. I really do. I'd like to thank Gareth for uh, lending me his great X5 for the day. Now, Gareth has lent me one of his cars in the past, the R32 Golf Mark V. If you want to watch my review on that car, click on the uh, pop-up banner. It's a great car. Um, leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel because we get a lot of people watching, but none of you clicking that subscribe uh, button. So please do. And, um, yeah, stay tuned for the next video, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. See you now.